Over the next few videos, we're going to take a look at ways that you can navigate your images inside of Photoshop. Now, when I say navigate, I simply mean panning around, up, down, left, and right, as well as zooming in and zooming out. Now, it sounds really basic, but it's actually a critical skill that you need to have. If you are editing photos and you need to clean up maybe, you know, somebody's freckle on a picture or maybe take out some sort of anomaly in an image, then the ability to zoom right in on the problem area is paramount to getting the job done nice and smoothly. If you're painting something inside of Photoshop, maybe you're creating an image completely from scratch, you may find that your hand is shaking a little bit much or you just don't like the quality the lines are getting. And in those cases, often enough, zooming in just a little bit can help really smooth your lines out and give you a much better result. So in this video, what we're going to do is look at the basics of navigation. And then in subsequent videos, we'll take a look at some more in-depth uh, options for navigating around your images. And what I'm really hoping is that you'll pay attention to these and just find the means of navigation that works best for you. Because it's really a question of... Where are your hands on the keyboard? Do you like using Photoshop just, you know, one-handed? Do you generally always have a, a hand on the keyboard? That sort of thing. So just take some notes, find out which of these methods works the best for you, or of course just jump around and use whichever ones you like. Now obviously for starters we need some sort of an image open, so I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm currently inside the Sample Pictures folder for Windows 7, and I'm going to grab this picture of penguins. If you don't have this picture, maybe you're running a different OS for, or for any reason whatsoever, you can grab any picture you like off the internet. It's really not going to make any difference whatsoever, especially just in terms of learning how to navigate. Now, for starters, even within the document window itself, we have some basic navigation buttons that we can make use of. And by this, I mean we have some scroll bars as well as some arrows we can click on. Now, currently, the scroll bars are grayed out because we're zoomed all the way out, and uh, scrolling around really wouldn't mean anything. But we also have this punch-in zoom factor down here at the very bottom where we can just take this and set it, say, to 100%. And now, as soon as the edges of the image exceed the bounds of the document, our scroll bars come to life. So we can click on the left and right scroll buttons. We can grab and drag the actual scroll bar itself. And we can go up, down, left, and right. And you've probably seen this kind of behavior on multiple applications. I mean, even uh, Microsoft Word has uh, scroll bars like this that, that work in the exact same way. Now, for zooming, you also have some other options. Up here at the very top of your interface, you've got the application bar, which has a zoom factor, which if you just want to reach up and click on this, that gives you four really fast options for 25, 50, 100, and 200 percent. It's not every single different setting, but if you know for a fact that you just want to get right to 100 percent zoom, it is fairly quick. Now, that's just some really, really basic ones and really not my favorites. I, I, generally speaking, I don't think I ever use this or the application bar or the scroll bars, but let's just kind of move along. Next, we have some tools that we can use to help us out with this. We have the hand tool and we have the zoom tool. Now, these are located in your tools panel on the left-hand side of your screen. They're down toward the bottom. They have some hotkeys associated with them, as you can see if you hold your mouse over and get the tool tip. So the hand tool is H, very easy to remember, and the zoom tool is Z. Let's take a look at how these work. I'm going to start off by tapping H to bring up the hand tool, and if I click and drag, I'm just moving the document around. Now, I'm not going to go over every single little nuance of usual, using this tool at the moment, but I do want to mention that by default, if you grab and kind of flick a little bit, you can kind of toss the document around. I'm not the world's biggest fan of this feature, to be perfectly honest, but it is one of those things that it's, it's kind of cool. I mean, I think it's cooler than it is uh, practical, but just know that it is there. So if you're trying to move things around really quickly and you find yourself letting go of the mouse too early and your document kind of flies away... That's the default behavior. It's not your mouse going crazy and, and nothing's broken. And we'll talk about how you can change that in an upcoming video. And moving down from here, we have the zoom tool. And the hotkey for this, as I mentioned, is the Z key. Now, the zoom tool has some different functionality depending on how you use it. So what we're going to do for now is keep this very simple, and we'll have a separate video dedicated specifically to the zoom tool and all of the different ways that you can put it to use. So for now, with the zoom tool active, all I want you to do is to pick a location on your document and just click on it. And that's just zooming you in closer and closer to your object. Now, if you take a look in the options bar, by default, this is set to zoom in. So it's a little, uh, little magnifying glass with a plus key on it. So that's zooming in. You can set this over to zoom out. And now when you click the mouse, you are indeed zooming out. Now, there are some hotkeys to do that and make that a little bit easier on you. You can click when you're set to zoom in. And if you hold down the alt key, 
that's going to zoom you back out. So just uh, be aware if you're zooming in, Alt is going to do the opposite thing. If we're zooming out, Alt will do the opposite thing as well and it'll zoom in. So it's kind of like you holding down the Alt key will just kind of invert the behavior of the zoom tool. And the zoom tool has a lot of other features. If you find yourself clicking and dragging and all kinds of weird things are happening right now, don't worry about that. We're going to cover all of the cool aspects of the zoom tool in a separate video specifically for the purpose. Okay, now moving along, we did kind of inadvertently mention a couple of hotkeys, and hotkeys are what I want to talk about next. We mentioned the Z and the H keys to bring up the zoom tool and the hand tool. Occasionally, I will use the Z key to open up the zoom tool or to activate it, but I don't think I ever use the H key to grab the hand tool. And the reason for that is that the hand tool is so important that it's actually bound to the space bar. So if you just hold down the space bar, you can click and drag and move your document around. And what it does is as long as the space bar is down, you've temporarily activated the hand tool. That's extremely useful. So no matter what you're doing, even if you've got your paintbrush and you're painting on your document and doing something awful, Awful, which you really shouldn't be doing. If you want to move around and paint on a different area, just hold down the space bar, drag to the new area, and commence with the destruction of your image. Now I'm going to remove those by undoing. I have to undo more than once, so I'm going to hit Control. Also hold down Alt and hit Z a couple times. So Control, Alt, Z. you got to hold all three of them down. And that steps you back through history, so it's kind of like having multiple levels of undo. Okay, so there's a couple of quick hotkeys. There's Z, H, there's the space bar. Space bar's huge. That's one of my favorite ways of panning around a document. In fact, it is my favorite way. It's what I use more often than anything else, is just holding the space bar and dragging the mouse. Now, there's a couple of other secret hotkeys as well. Uh, we have Control-1. And what that's going to do is zoom you to 100%. Now, currently, we're zoomed to 100% already. So what I'm going to do is just take my zoom factor and set it to 200%. And then I'll hit Control-1, and that zooms us right back out to 100. We also have Control-0, and that's going to fit the image into your view. So if, it's, uh, if your image is kind of trailing off the outer edge like it is right now, and you want to make sure you're seeing the whole thing, no matter, regardless of the zoom level, you can hit Control-0. And you'll notice that backs us out to kind of an odd number. That takes us to 80 4.2%, but that's because that's the lowest number that is going to nice and cleanly get everything into the view with a cute little, uh, I don't know, I guess 10 pixel border around the outer edge. Now, that's not all. We also have the ability to use the scroll wheel. I do want to mention this, though, before I jump too far into this. Let me go ahead and grab the, the move tool. The reason I'm doing that is it's just kind of like the default don't do anything tool for Photoshop, and I don't want to accidentally zoom, so I'll just click that. I just I want to mention this, though, about uh, the scroll wheel. What I'm showing you is the default behavior. If you have gone into Photoshop and mucked around with the preferences, you can make the scroll wheel do some different things. So if the scroll wheel is doing some different things for you, it's because you've changed your preferences. Now what I'm going to do is take my zoom factor up here inside the application bar and set it to 200%. The only reason I'm doing that is that gives me the ability to actually pan around as you can see here. Now the scroll wheel, let's talk about this. As I roll the mouse wheel down, or the scroll wheel down, you'll notice we're zooming, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're not zooming, we're panning up and down the image. So it's just like uh, using the scroll wheel on a web page or in Microsoft Word or any number of applications. It just allows you to move up and down by default. If you hold down the shift key while you're using the scroll wheel, you'll move in much larger increments. So be aware of that. I'm holding down shift, and as I bump the scroll wheel, I'm moving really far. Very nice if you have a very, very large document and you don't want to spend all day or get carpal tunnel by scrolling over and over and over again. Now, if you hold down the control key while you scroll the mouse wheel. You'll see that you're panning left and right. Down goes to the right, up goes to the left. Extremely handy. You can combine this with shift if you want to move more quickly. Finally, you have the ability to hold down the Alt key. Now, I'm on Windows, so it's the Alt key. On a Mac, I believe it's the Command key as opposed to the Option key, but if I'm wrong, it's one or the other. So forgive me for not having a Mac keyboard right here. I'm, I'm like 90% sure it's the Command key, though. So if we hold down the Alt key, and we scroll the mouse wheel, we are zooming in and out. Very, very handy. I do want to mention this, though. It's kind of a caveat of using the Alt key on a Windows machine. You'll notice something. Um, if I'm, I'm just going to click here inside the document to get no behaviors. We're, we're not doing anything at all. Watch very closely up here in the menu bar when I hold down the Alt key. 
you see what happened? The first letter of each menu option gets underlined. This is a Windows navigation feature that's been around since the dawn of Windows, uh, because if you wanted to get into the file menu, for example, you could hit Alt-F and that will open up the file menu, or you can hit Alt-A and grab the analysis menu. It's very handy and it's very cool, but the problem is that if you are holding down the Alt key and doing some zooming, Windows is not detecting the motion of the scroll wheel like a button press. So what happens is you release the Alt key, and notice that currently the file menu is highlighted. If I was to tap, say, the Enter key, or actually let's just hit the, uh, the F key now, two things happen. I go into full screen mode, because that's what the F key does inside of Photoshop, but I also open up the file menu, because Windows captured that Alt key as well. So let me tap F a couple more times to get us right back to where we were. It's just one of those things you have to be a little bit aware of. When you hit the Alt key, Windows is looking for some further input to figure out how it's going to handle the next thing you do with your mouse. Also, if you hit Alt and then you start hitting the space bar you'll get some system beeps because Windows is still waiting for some sort of an input from you. And I can actually use the arrow keys. Right now I'm using the left and right arrow keys to choose which one of my menus is selected. That doesn't mean you shouldn't ever use the Alt key for zooming in and out. I just want to mention that I do it quite a lot, actually. Just make sure you click your mouse when you're done. And that tells Windows that you have no intention of doing anything with the main menu bar, that you were just doing it for some other reason. So that's why another reason why I had the Move tool active here at the top of my, uh, my Tools panel. It's just kind of a, a do-nothing click to, uh, to just get my focus right back on the document and away from the main menu bar. Okay, so that is a look at the various hotkeys. So we've gone over some basic navigation using the scroll bars inside your document, using the zoom factor located in the lower left corner of your document. We talked about the zoom factor located up in the application bar. Uh, we talked about the tools, the zoom tool and the hand tool. That's uh, The hand tool is under the H key, or you can click on it, of course. The zoom tool is with the Z key, or of course you can click on it as well. Generally, I don't ever find myself needing to hit the H key or click on the hand tool because it is located along with the space bar. So just hold down the space bar and you can click and drag your document around to pan it around. Extremely useful. Then we took a look at some hotkeys, of course Z and H for opening up the zoom and hand tools respectively. We have control 1, which will zoom to our actual size or 100%. We have control 0, which will fit the document on the screen. And we have the behavior of our scroll wheel, which allows us to scroll up and down by default. If we hold down shift, we scroll up and down much more quickly. If we hold control, we scroll left and right, and we can also combine that with shift to move left and right much more quickly. And we have alt, which allows us to zoom in and out. And we can combine that with shift as well if we want to zoom in and out a lot more quickly. So just be aware of that. Now that is a, a rundown of our basic navigation methods. As we move forward, I'll be taking a look at some other tools that we can use uh, that you might prefer over just using these basic methods, as well as some of the more in-depth features for things like the Zoom tool. But that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.